Amen. God bless you this morning. So good to be here and so good to see each one of you. I am excited about the word of God and I'm excited about this preacher bringing us the word of God. Uh, come on, put your hands together for our pastor, Pastor Blaine. No? Where's the uh, microphone? Okay. I don't know. No? Good morning. We're trying to locate the microphone. We'll find it. In the, while we're doing that, let's go to Colossians, first chapter. Good to see Brother Thrower and Gwen. Uh, but good to see you here. He's doing a little Facebook fighting last night, and I saw it, and I said, well, that don't, that don't bring him back to church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let, let, let me say this. The Bible's, the very thing that we need the most is what we usually run from. Let me see if I can make that a little clearer. How many people do you know in your life that if they would just sit down and let you tell them some things, you don't want any money from them or anything. You actually see them, Sister Madeline, right here, about to go harm to them, not harm to you. And that's the reason that it's good to have someone who loves you around, because they don't want nothing from you. They, they just want to see you do better. Hey Amen. Shamanika's not here today, but happy birthday to Shamanika, to your daughter. Hey Amen. They're growing up right there in front of us. Uh, but in order to, 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 to receive grace. And, and we understand that grace is what enables us when we can't do it. Grace does not operate with what you can do. You don't need grace uh, to do what you already have the power to do. But many of us, Sister Cynthia Fryson, in life we find out that um, we are at an impasse. We are somewhere where we can't do, we, we, we can't do, we, 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 can, we can make money. We can buy a palatial home, but we can't, we can buy a palatial house, but we can't make a home. I, I, I was thinking about this beautiful home down there in Waverly Woods. This gentleman had this house, and I found out that the house had an elevator in it. Now, that may not be nothing to you, but you must understand where I come from. We, we, we were raised in not those kind of circumstances. Wasn't no elevator in our house. Wasn't no pool in the middle of it and, and all that stuff. Well, not no, you know, maybe where the rain had come down or, or, or whatever. And in my mind, I would think that someone who was blessed with those kind of accoutrements and a, a person who had a palatial home like that looked like y'all wouldn't have nothing to argue about. And, and then it goes so far, they, you, they had a, like a playground out there in front of the big, big house where that child could just run and play. And I thought they must be, uh, you know, the most happiest people in the world. But, but now, come to find out now, the house house has, has broken up and they, he done took somebody else's wife and her, his wife done took grace grace to help and, and the reason that the church is in the place that it's in right now because the church has abandoned grace uh, the church has decided that I can do it if I read my Bible enough, if I come to church enough, if we buy the right kind of choir robes, if, if we get the right kind of program to come through, if we hire the right preacher, then we're going to be all right. But I want you to know something. You don't hear nothing else today. God has so fixed it where well, you can't make it without him. Look at your neighbor and tell him, you can't make it without him. You, you can't. He has made it proud no matter how much money you get. No matter how handsome or uh, 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 whatever, uh, what is the guy named Urban name? Mary Holly Berry, and they couldn't stay there. I said, Lord, what's wrong with him? No matter how, uh, how glorious the pulchritude of your mate, uh, everybody else see beauty, you look over there and get sick of the stomach. 
You can't stand to be in the same house. And I, and I tell people all the time, Sister, Sister Brown, I tell them, I say, you need to think real good before you get married. You, you, you need to think real good before you enter into that kind of relationship. Because I'm, I'm the most miserable, you think you miserable single? You, you think you miserable single? You haven't seen miserable until you would rather uh, go to Walmart. You'd rather go to, you'd rather go anywhere but go home. Thank you, Jesus. And so then, we, we, we understand that we're saved by grace through faith. And we understand that without God's help, we're not going to be able to be successful. And they, they fooled me. I, I either I must have misheard them, but I thought that if you go to church and, and, and you listen to the preacher and, and, and you read your Bible and, and you do all these things and whatever, eventually, one of these days, uh, you're going to be a different person. You, you, you're going to be changed. You, 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 you're going to be where, where the stuff that you used to do, you, you ain't going to do it no more. I, I, I thought that's how it worked. But I, but I had a misconception. Because you see, if it worked like that, then you would be due some glory. Because we would be able to point to you. You know how they do at church. They got certain folks that wear different stuff than other folk. When you get to this level, we're going to put you in all white and we're going to sit you over here on this side right over here. But God has so fixed it. Well, you ain't going to never get to the point where you don't need him. Every hour, somebody cried out, say, I need thee. Every hour. The Baptist deacon put it like this, Brother Thor, where he said that if thou withdraw, Thyself for me, whither shall I go? He went further and said, no other help do I know. Testify David. David said, I'm going to look to the hills. David said, I messed up. I, I slept with Uriah's wife. I, I even tr tricked him and sent him to the front line. Not only am I an adulterer, but now I'm a murderer. He said, but you know what? I'm not going to despair. I'm going to look to the hills. So I come to find out that I can't get too bad. I can't get too nasty. I come to find out I can't mess up too bad that, that I can always call on my father. Testify, prodigal son, Luke 15. The prodigal son said, I left home. I, I, I talked to my people bad. Before I left, I came and what I had is all gone. I got nothing. I'm coming back in shame. But devil, I changed my mind. I'm going home because I know at home they love me and I've been humbled. Oh, I left in a huff. I left, I left thinking I was this and I was that. Give me mine and let me go. And I'm coming back well, like a sucky egg dog with my tail in between. My Come on, y'all. But you know what? David said at one time, he said, it was good for me that I was afflicted because before I was afflicted, I went astray. I thank God for my whoopings. I, I thank God for my pain. I thank God for my embarrassment. I thank God I didn't make a hundred. I didn't cross every T. I thank God for the divorce. I thank, I thank God for the drug. I thank God for everything. Because I tell you what, it wasn't up on top of the mountain, but it was down in Sorrow Valley that I met the God of my salvation and I found out I found out that them old women with the white rags on their head had been working in folks' child kitchen all day. I heard, found out they knew what they were talking about. What you mean, Pastor? They would just say, he's all right. <laughs> they, they, they didn't have theological degrees. They didn't know how to exegete a text. They didn't know homiletics and hermeneutics. They just put it like this, lady. They said, he's all right. Somebody said, that's all you know. He said, no. He said, have you tried Jesus? <laughs> have you tried Jesus? <laughs> Uh, he's all right. One old lady sitting on the corner, they hadn't asked her nothing, and she just went to talking, and she said, he's a mighty good company keeper. You see, you got to know him for yourself. There are lonely times. You can have people all around you, but yet you are lonely, yet you despair, yet you become depressed. Uh, <sighs> Glad to be here this morning. You see, I don't, I don't need you to whitewash this for me. Uh, don't, don't give me some false expectations. 
uh, you know, this is the last tear you're going to cry. And this right here is your year. They, I, I hope they quit telling them lies now. <laughs> Come on, we, we stepping out of 2020 and we stepping into 20. Well, you know what? <laughs> 2020 was the year of hell, and 2021 was the year that hell froze over. Never but one degree. What? You? What you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is, God, God, God. It ain't never about me. It ain't never what I'm going to do. It ain't never where I'm going to get and who I'm going to be and whatever because you're not who you think you are. And God will let the door open up to show you that you ain't who you thought you were. Have you ever thought that you had really grown spiritually and you messed around and somebody said something or did something and you found out you wasn't it? Uh, see, that's the reason, Pastor, I don't like to get mad. You see, you got some Negroes that play mad. Mm -hmm. When the police show up or something and everything, all of a sudden they get some sense. But I got one of them mad that when the police show up, I'm ready to fight the police too. So they got, thank you. I don't need Thank you, Lord. Let, let us go to the Bible. Well, well what I tell y'all? Colossians, let's go to Colossians, the first chapter. Uh, Colossians 1, I guess you, you, you already got the subject, but you didn't have it. We'll do it formally. Look at your neighbor. Look him right there now and tell him, so I can't make it without him. I, I can't. I can't make it without him. Don't give me nothing. Don't give me nothing that I'm supposed to do. Because after I do it, I want some credit. And to him is all the glory and all the honor. The Bible says that in heaven, the 24 elders take their crowns off and they kneel before him. They say he's a thrice holy God, holy, holy, holy. And they pray to, to thee goes all the glory and all the honor. I want you to know something. You're trying to be happy. You, 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 you're trying to live successful. It ain't never going to be happy as long as you're looking for something for you. But, but when you pray one simple prayer, you say, not my will, but thy will be be done. When you, when you get to the place, you say, you know what, God, I can't go another further. When you get to the place, Uncle George, where you realize, say, God, I have done all you ever been there. I have done all that I know to do. I raised these children. I took them to church. And now they act like they don't even know God. But I know this right here, God, you gave them to me and I'm giving them back to you. And you do it, God. Do it, God. Somebody went so far, Sister Frostin, that said, he's able. He's, he's, he's able. See, you got to know the ability of your God. Because, Brother Brimley, I can talk to you. The devil always is going to try to question, can God? When God brought them out of Egypt, out of Egypt uh, and they got there to the Red Sea, and it looked like they wasn't going to go any further, and the people begin to murmur and to complain. And that's the reason you got to separate yourself from other people. You got to make a difference between believers and unbelievers. And then and, and Moses be, began to become despondent because of the people. He loved the people. He was meek and he was humble. And God told him, said, stand still. Stand still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sheriff, the message today is I can't make it without him. The place that I'm at right now is, you know what, God, if you don't do it, I'm through with it. God, you, you ever done all you know to do to get along with folk? You ever, you ever done all you know to do to make things right and folks still can't see you right? But oh, Lord, see, 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 the devil thought, hmm, he thought he was destroying you. It's like Joseph told his brothers, he said, you meant it for evil. Oh, but God meant it for good. <laughs> you see, the devil <laughs> laying traps and, and, and laying heartaches at your lap. You don't know all you know to do, and it still don't come to nothing. <laughs> and he thinks, oh, we got it. <laughs> but the thing about it, Mother Bland, is all the time God pushing you in your back. <laughs> he's pushing you away from them, <laughs> and he's pushing you to your knees. <laughs> and he's pushing you to a place of submission, to humility. He's pushing you to a place <laughs> where you know for yourself that you You've done all that you know to do and it ain't come to nothing. Now is the time for me to stand still. I'll run up out of here. You ever been there? 
where you now is the time. God, now is a, you get to a place where you say, God, either you God or you ain't God. I'm tired of trying to prop you up. I'm tired of trying to help God. I'm tired of trying to make it be something. I've dropped my hands and I'm finna stand still and watch the salvation. And then he saw something they never had seen where the water congealed and like went up on both sides like a wall and they walked through on dry land. Now watch this. The same situation that saved you killed. I run up out of here. I run up out of here. The same situation. Because you see, the devil is always going to try to counterfeit what God has done. You got folks that don't like you, but they're walking behind you trying to do what you did. But what they don't understand, Sam, that it wasn't you, but it was God that all the time... You see the glory, but you don't know the story. Baby, you really don't want. Sometimes folk try to preach like you preach. Sometimes folk try to act like you act. But baby, you don't know the price that's behind this anointing. You do your really. Jesus is my disciples mama came to him and pushed them up to him and said oh, look at here I want my sons to sit on your right and your left when you come into your kingdom and Jesus told him said mom woman I'm here in my earthly ministry I get sleepy I get tired I get hungry just like they do I haven't yet entered into my kingdom it's not for me to give but my father which is above but let me ask you a question are you willing to be baptized with the baptism which I am straightening until it be accomplished. There is a baptism of fire that has to happen and what it does is it disables me. It lets me know that without God see can't nobody give that to you. Can't nobody give that to you. That's the reason this is a Pittman pastor and ain't never been hard to me because I understand my limitations. I understand that it's certain things that the Spirit have to give you. And when the Spirit gives you that God, I can't do nothing without you. God, I can't make it without you. I've got experience with the flesh. I've got experience trying my best. You see, this message here ain't for a hairy hippie. This message here ain't for the person who don't want to do no better. This message here ain't for the person that ain't trying. This message here is for folk like me that tried their best. I, I tried to do everything them church folk told me to do. God, God, taking 10% of my money, giving you that. Doing everything that you told me to do. But yet my life was no better. You said, what God? He said, that's the same shape that the woman with the issue of blood was in. She spent all she had. And the Bible says she was no better. But one day she heard that a man was passing by and she said I know I'm bankrupt I know I'm not a member of his church but if I can get low enough if I can just touch the hem of his garment I know I'll be made whole the faith that she had that God was yet able you, you, you must understand you must understand that, 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 that I, I get no better as long as I look to my ability. <laughs> because there is an end to my ability. <laughs> Lady Deborah and I, June, we'd be married 42 years. <sighs> but even this morning or yesterday or day before, <laughs> there's a certain time that you can look at me and I, mm, mm, you, mm, you can say something. <laughs> Just a simple question. <laughs> Now, Sheila might have said the same thing. It wouldn't have bothered me. But the fact that you said it, hmm, look like to me you're just a little too far in my business. Look like, look like, hmm. And so, 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 so God, and, and that's the reason that God ordained marriage. Uh, yeah, it's better, you, you need to be married. Uh, you don't need to be married to the wrong person, but you need to be married. Uh, because I'm going to tell you what, that marriage, uh, you going in the fire. Uh, that, that marriage, uh, you, you see, you, you, you're free and fancy, and you do where you want to do, and you go where you want to do. You ain't got to explain nothing to nobody and, and, and whatever. But you know, uh, humility and discipline will bring me to a better place. Uh, and, and if a person ain't married and you don't know Jesus, I feel sorry. 
If you if you married and you don't know Jesus, I thank you, Lord. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Colossians, the first chapter. Let's see. I ain't, I ain't got up 22 minutes. Might not use them. Colossians and make it no further than Corinthians. Let's see. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and then Colossians. I can't make it without him. It seems like a very simple concept, huh? Uh, but it's something about man that he won't share to take things into his own hands. Uh, especially if you're a person that have had some success. If, especially if you're a person that has a certain degree of intelligence. Uh, especially if you are a person who uh, uh, have a little money in the bank. <sighs> yeah. You feel like that your money will make you, make you move. I said Colossians. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Come on. I'm off the street. Uh, I'm headed that way. First Corinthians 1, 1 and 26, 1 and 26. Colossians, if I don't get back to it, what I was going to look at, Sheriff, was the scripture that said, you have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You up under di different jurisdiction. You see, and part of the problem, Deacon Brimley, is, is that we have not received new creation teaching. You see, Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter says, uh, says, 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 says that if any man be in Christ, and the way I get in Christ is, is through what I believe. When, when I believe that the death, burial, and resurrection yeah, is the only payment that God will receive for my sin, and then my sin have been paid for, my sin is no longer imputed unto me. And, and, and the Bible says, with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, uh, into right standing with God. And so because I believe the gospel from my heart, the spirit of God, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. And so then, just like leaving from Helena and crossing the bridge takes you from Arkansas to Mississippi, uh, there are different rules in Mississippi than there are in Arkansas. I know some of them because I'm licensed to practice law in Arkansas and Mississippi. Uh, if you're in Arkansas in the school and a projectile from a lawnmower hits you in your eye and your eye is put out, you can't get a dime. But right across the bridge, if it happens, you have an actionable suit. And the reason is, is because of, are you getting this? Its reason is, is because of the jurisdiction that you're in. Now, it makes a difference, Sheriff. Uh, you're the sheriff here in Phillips County, but you don't have the same power or the same authority uh, uh, in Pulaski County that you got in Phillips County. You're still a sheriff, but you are a sheriff in Phillips County. And so the Bible says in Colossians, said that we have been translated. And you see, uh, uh, physically watching with my eyes and with my ears and touch and taste, uh, it does not look like that. And so that's the reason the Bible says in Habakkuk in Romans and in Galatians uh, that the just shall live by faith. Uh, see, I did not understand, Sister Pittman, uh, that this was a faith walk. Uh, I did not understand uh, that I've got to have God's word uh, because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Uh, and that's the reason that you need a preacher. I ain't talking about somebody that bought a suit. Uh, I ain't talking about somebody that put a collar on backwards. Uh, but but I'm talking about a God ordained man or woman of God that's caring and pregnant with the word of God because the word of God when it is believed will produce faith in your life I wish I had four folks that said pastor I would not have moved from where I was to where I am if it had not been for believing God I had to believe God I had, I had to believe God. Brother Brimley, some of us, the, the cupboard was bare. Some of us, <laughs> folks was just waiting on us to fall. And when it looked like that we was down, they began to laugh in our face. 
they began to make snide remarks and stuff started to get back with us. And, and we started thinking, what have I ever done to them? And matter of fact, I helped them when they was down. But you know what? The Bible says that when my father and my mother forsake me, then will he take up my cause? Psalm 27. You see, David knew what he was talking about. Because when Samuel came down to anoint the new king, they did not even invite David to the caucus. They relegated David to stay out there and take care of the sheep. You ain't nobody and you ain't gonna never be nobody. Don't you run up out of here. But I got about three folks that they thought and they said that you would never hold what you get. But you holding it and you've been holding it. You're doing a good job and you're comfortable with it. Thank you, Jesus. When Lady Deborah had her job, she was overlooking superintendents and had never taught school one day in her life. And then they tried to come up with a rule, Brother Thrower, that said you had to have an education degree. Or you had to have that. But I come here today to tell you that she ain't getting no education degree. She didn't teach no school, but she's been retired from the Department of Education since 2011. And ain't Mr. Mill, or ain't me. I'm telling you, what happens when you lead and you depend upon God? My testimony this morning is I can't make it with. They tried to make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego turn their back on God. You looking at people and what they doing to you. <laughs> but the Bible said that we don't fight against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness. And how you have to sleep, but the demons don't sleep. Huh? And while you sleeping, huh? uh, the demons, is, they, they are plotting huh? on how to discourage you and how to depress you huh? and how to make you give up on God. But you know why? You don't have to worry about it while you sleep. Because they left on record, they said the God of Israel neither sleeps nor slumbers. Oh, thank you, Jesus. When I was in the army, they used to have what they call guard duty. And one of the worst things you could do was go to sleep on guard duty. They send you to the stockade if they found out you were sleeping on guard duty. Why is that, Pastor Bland? The reason is, is that the rest of the company was sleep and they were depending on you to be awake. They were depending on you yes, sir. to let them know if there was danger and that's the reason that God hard was grieved with the shepherds of Israel over in Jeremiah and even Isaiah where he said they're dumb dogs <laughs> they won't even bark <laughs> what you got a dog around your house <laughs> and he sleep just like you sleep. The robber getting ready to come in, he won't say a word. He don't let him know nothing that's going on. And that's the reason that God said, he said, I'm gonna choose pastors after my own heart. And he told them, he said, cry loud and spare not. Cry loud and spare not. Sheriff, I can tell you this right here, and you probably in the same shape I'm in. Uh, I could have a whole lot more fake friends. I could, I could have a whole lot. I'd be holding some more positions uh, and making money and everything uh, if I wouldn't cry out and I wouldn't tell the truth. Uh, but I want you to know something. Uh, has anybody else got this testimony right here? Uh, God been too good to me. Uh, Lord, you brought me from too far. Uh, I ain't forgot. Uh, I remember the old saints used to sing a song from the Jap, uh, and they would say, Jesus, uh, I'll never forget uh, where you brought me from. Uh, it's a sad thing when you run up on a brand new Negro. It's a, oh, it's, it's a hurting thing when, when you run up on a Clarence Thomas. Here you are, you have benefited from affirmative action and now you want to cut it off. You, you got a system that has been designed to keep people down and now you are making allowances to try to adjust it and even the playing field and you walked across the bridge but you want to burn the bridge down where well, can't no, do you know you got folk like that? You got folk that don't want you to have what they have. How'd that hurt you? That, that, that I can take care of my children too. How, how'd that hurt you? That I'm able to ride around in a car that, that, that I ain't got to 
change the oil and fill. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So then, uh, they did not even invite poor David to the caucus. But would nothing happen until they called David? What you saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is, child of God, rest easy. So, Pastor, don't tell me that. Don't give me no scripture. I understand. That's the way they used to do me. They tell me something, but they wouldn't give me no back. I want to hear what God said. Not what you said, Pastor. I, I, I hear. Ah, let's see that. Let's call Paul to the stand. Paul stood, went to the stand, and Paul said, "If God before, so uh, if, if God, God before, so if God before, us, who, who who can be against us?" Oh my God, I, I think I need to look at that scripture. Let's go, let's go to Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter. You see, God can't help you until you give up on yourself. As long as you're looking for you to do something, you ain't gonna never do nothing. Ain't no telling what you might do. And that's what's so funny about the church world is, is we so surprised when we find out that a, that a man been a man. We, we so surprised. And that's because we bought into a lie. We don't read our Bible. And I'm gonna tell you something. Uh, I would like to have a choir. I would like to have uh, robes, and I would like to have them to march in and, and all that. And I, you know, I would like to sit up here on the throne with a with a robe on and uh, all that stuff. Now, come on, y'all. Come on. But what I come to find out is, is that some dangerous stuff? It's some dangerous stuff. It's some dangerous stuff. Let me tell you something, music has a way of transporting you to somewhere you ain't. Ooh, let me say that again. Uh, it's just like wine or whiskey. It make you feel like something that you're not. Come on, y'all. Come on. And so then, it's, it's a dangerous thing. I love music. I, I, I love it. But, 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 but you listen at it and you feel better, but you're just as ignorant as you were before you start listening at it. You're just as ignorant. You may be more ignorant than you was. He did. Save a seat for me. How you gonna save a seat for somebody? But it make you feel good. You can look for me. Everybody die, ain't never been to church, ain't never said nothing about Jesus. And we put, we, on their obituary, we put wings on them, we put them in heaven. Ain't never heard about nobody in heaven with wings. You see, I'm tired of the misinformation. I'm tired of it. I, I, you don't have to give that to me. I'm full of grown. I told my mama, I got my, 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 my award letter yesterday. They, they, Medicare A. <laughs> Medicare A started in February. Medicare B, that's the hospitalization. B started this month. That's a physician. And they say, you're on your own for D now. That's the pharmacy. Um, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> full of grown. Full of grown. Ain't got been to no foolishness. Paul said when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I, you know, and I know God is a transformative God, but throw, I, I don't have to stay where I was. And I don't even have to be ashamed about it. I, I can tell you about it. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm. And, and I don't say it because I'm proud of it. I say it because somebody there right now. And you need to put your pride aside and try to help somebody and let them know, give them hope. Tell them that there is a brighter day ahead, that God is able. Like I said, they tried to take uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they tried to take their, their, their confidence away and everything. They said, if you don't bow, if you don't bow, and God had told them that you should have no other God before me. Now that idolatry is what sent them over into Babylon. They had to go across the hot Arabian desert and march all that time, had to leave their home. They saw the temple and everything tore down. You can read about it in Lamentation. And now we've got over here, and, and then you're gonna tell me that I'm feeling ready to bow to a golden image of you? And, and they told him, they said, okay. They said, now I, I don't know whether I'm gonna go through the fire, or he gonna save me from the fire. He said, but I know that he able. If he don't do it, he's yet able. He's yet able. And he said, uh, the last thing they said was, we will. 
not bow. And Paul, talking to 2 Timothy, in the end, he told Timothy, he told him, he said, uh, I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. I have fought a good fight. Now, I used to say that, that when I got thrown out of Arkansas State University, I used to say I got to fighting with a security guard. And it took me time for that to process and for the truth to come to me. But the first thing is, <clears throat> wasn't nobody here swole up but man. Because he hit me with one of those billy clubs. Now, those billy clubs got rub on the outside of them. Well, you actually get three licks for one because it bounces on you. Uh, that's the first thing. The next thing was, Tara, didn't nobody get no lick but him. He hit me, I hit the floor. That's not a fight. In order to be in a fight, you got to get a lick in. That's one of the requisites of a fight. And so Paul told Timothy, he said, fight. Hey, glory to God. Uh, and then Paul told the Ephesians the armor to put on. And then he said, above all, taking up the shield of faith. You see, that's what you're being given this morning is the shield of faith. Because you're being given the word to believe. And if you believe the word then you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy because he's firing at you. He's firing at you. And one thing about it is he gives grace to the humble. And Sister Cynthia Frasson, if you're a proud person, God will resist you. God want to help you, but you're too proud. God want to come to your rescue, but you're too proud. But the moment that you humble yourself and tell God, God, I can't make it without you, that's when the Bible says that when the enemy come in, like, I'm preaching right now, when the enemy come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. Thank you, Jesus. What time I got? I ain't got but four minutes. Let me give y'all at least one scripture. Come on. Uh, he says, Romans 8 and verse 18. Here he says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, thank you, Paul, because sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like ain't nobody going through but me. Sometimes I think like you just got a free word. You just, ain't nothing happening to you. Ain't nothing going on. But Paul includes and he says that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So go, read, leave 18 and go on over uh, to verse 28. And he said, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God that's Mother Blank, what I was talking about, about God got his hand in my back. You see, where God is leading us, we really don't want to go. I remember when Vandal Jr. was in school, he was so aggravating, he was so foolish. It <laughs> looked like every day it was something. I'm trying, you ever been there, you trying to work, you trying to do, you buying them clothes, you send them, but they go to school and act like ain't no mom and daddy at the house. <laughs> they go to school and act worse than the folk ain't got no mom and daddy. <laughs> and every day, you know, look like they love to call me, Mr. Bland, Vanda Jr. And some of it, I'm saying, dog, that's your job. Somebody ain't doing them but just talking. He used to talking. I let him talk at home. But I'd be so glad when I get about two or three days, I don't get, he don't have no behavior document. He ain't got no, no report or nothing like that. But that don't mean that things are going well because I ain't heard nothing. So he said, yet it's all working together for my good. Let me, let me jump on down. We, we throw. Let me jump on down. Verse 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, 
who, who can be against us? I got God on my side. Now God said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And that's reading chair. I can't go to church and listen to these preachers because they be telling me God mad. And then at first, when they first started out, they were talking about them when the coronavirus, I think they thought like I did, it wasn't going to last but about a month or two. I like, see God trying to tell y'all something, and God trying to. But you got all this power and all this oil in the church, and you got all this healing in your hand, and whatever and whatever, but you got on a mask just like everybody else now. As a matter of fact, y'all don't even have church. You, 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 you hid out at your house. You hid out at your house on your computer preaching to folk from your house with all that power that you had and all the healing and how you could stand up and declare and you could send devils away and none of these diseases would touch you and all of the things that were promised to Israel and never was promised to us. But you mistaught me. I believed what you said because you was the pastor, because you was the preacher, because you was the one that said that God called you. He didn't call me, and so I believed you. But that day is over. That day is over. Uh-huh. Now is let God be true and let every man be a lie. And Sheriff, I had to get to the place like this. If in order for us to be friends, I got to agree with you, everything that you said, and I got to be what you want me to be in order for us to be friends. It's seven billion people in the world. I believe I can find somebody else. I, I just believe out of this seven billion, I can find somebody that loves me. Clap your hands for the Lord. I can't make it without him.